How good is it in the country? Fields of gold, the canola in bloom. Looking forward to getting out and meeting some of the locals of Wombat. What do you call someone from Wombat? Wombatonian? Wombal? Who knows? The locals welcome anyone here. They want to have a talk to travellers. They want to have a talk to, to anyone that comes in. They're friendly and... Find out their life story. They find out all about the pub. I'm not the only one that's never left. There's quite a few others that sort of come for a visit and come back and stay. Most people have heard of Young. It's the cherry capital of Australia. But just 15 kilometres south on the Olympic Highway, you'll run into this big bummed fella the mighty Wombat and the village of Wombat. Legend has it, the town of Wombat was named not because of the great Aussie marsupial, but because of all the holes in the ground left from the gold rush. That's just one of the stories you will hear at the iconic Wombat Hotel. Ian Wilson is the current caretaker of this ripping country pub and loves the history nearly as much as he loves giving it to the locals. She's a beautiful old pub. Show us some of the features of the place. Summer, this is the place to be outside. Yep. And it's funny because even in the middle of winter, all the smokers, plenty of tables inside to sit at, but they'll still sit outside in the cold and say, oh, yep. it's fucking cold. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have think? It is stunning and it's a beautiful corner pub. It is a corner pub. The old highway used to come down here and past here. So they'd lose control and wipe out the veranda. Apparently I can clean the grill a lot better if I've got a beer in here. Indeed. Ah. No, absolutely. Uh, oh, just keep an eye if the dog comes back. You might even walk right around. Thank you, mate. So here we have the main bar. It's only little, but in picking season, we have a line up at the door, they come through, have two people boring, and they're all doing the tilt. So they just continue down with their beers, she goes one to three beers, cool. And if the half of them haven't had a shower, the Glen 20's been here and all that. <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking good, they? they are good. Pour a beer, give them a squirt. Yeah. In for a squirt. <laughs> well, I hate going to a country park and there's no history. Yeah. In here, people can come in here and they can spend hours in here just reading up on what happened in the area. Every wall has something on it. The pub winner was back in 1900s. 1938. Yeah. yeah. That's what you go to a country pub for. Yeah. So is, to, is to read the little stuff and they do. You know? The tractor pull. Uh, tractor pulls every uh, Australia day. Yep. Every Australia day up at the Oval. We just started up a fishing club. That's going good. Yeah. That's going good. We thought we'd get 10 members or so. Or we go, oh, we'll just go fishing. But no, we're... How many members have we got, Ariel? Fishing club? You're supposed to be the, the, the secretary. 20, about tw at least 20 members. Yeah. Where's the fishing? Wombat Creek. Wombat Creek? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you've got Blaring Dam, you've got Barranjuck Dam. Yeah. You've got dams up near Forbes. The next trip is meant to be at Bateman's Bay. Jesus. Yeah, the coastal trip's only two and a half hours. We're closer to the things than what people think. Yeah. Everyone think we're in the middle of butt fuck nowhere. But yeah, no. <laughs> That's right. what I thought yeah. we were. Well, we're not. No. <laughs> no. But why would you want to go there when you, you could just be here? Fish. Yeah, right. No fish in Wombat Creek. No, just no. holes and yeah, no, yeah. no wombats either. Yeah. No, no wombats, <laughs> no <laughs> holes, no fish. Very little water. <laughs> We've got a past patrons wall and we have people coming in just to have a look at the past patrons to say that was my grandfather and Granky when he was a kid. If the locals piss me off, I take a boat all of them. And they ask why and I say, because you'll end up fucking up there. So we've got our Anzac room. Yeah. Great little room. The missus come up with an idea. Well, I'm going to job, so we re jip rock wool. And mine. Made it, she painted all the walls and Yo, decorated. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And she's the one that looked up all the memorabilia and all the history and everything around here is mainly people that served from this area. Awesome. The wall map is very rare. Okay. It's a it's a great piece. And it's just got history of everyone that's local. Yeah, amazing. You know, so it's it's amazing how many people serve. But Anzac Day's very big here. Yeah. The bagpipes will lead them all up. 
and then they'll all come back down for brick. Yeah, cool. So at seven o'clock, we've got bacon eggs going, we've got the rum and bonox going. Shit drink, but geez, they all drink it. <laughs> I was born and bred in Mombat. My mother had the post office, she had the exchange. I was public in from 1995 to 2003, but I have owned the um, hotel for 27 years all up, leases in and so on. Now, your name is synonymous with the hotel itself. There's been lots of minor hands that have had a role in it. Can you yeah. tell me the history of the pub? Well, if you go back about 1915, um, my um, grandfather's brother, he took the pub on, and that was a hard time, of course, because that's the uh, First World War. Yeah. But eventually moved on to his son, whose name was Dinny. But they had the hotel from about 1915 to 1941, so they also went through the 30s, yeah. when you had the Depression and yeah. so on. And stories have come down through the family line that having a pub in the Depression, you couldn't give them away, let alone sell them, so they stuck by it. and. People had no money to buy beer, but you just did what you could do, I suppose. They sold on eventually about 1941, and then it came back into the family name in 1995, and I sold 12 months ago virtually in August, so I had it for about 27 years. Tell us about uh, getting into the pub. You were born and raised here. What made you get in and think, you know what, I'll, I'll have a crack at this? It was quite pleasant to move in because locals respected me, and we got on like a house on fire. Because with a small country pub, I learned, by the way, I used to service this hotel myself when I drank here, was the pub is for the locals, whoever owns it's only managing it. You let your locals run the show and you don't get any trouble that way. Tell us about the importance of, of the pub to a little town like Wombat. Like everyone knows with little villages, your pub is your centre hub. It's Centrelink, it's a job agency. We um, join them together, they have children together and we also have wakes when they pass away and some of them people have lived here all their life. Yeah. But when they passed on, you could feel a real hole, you know, because they're your history of the village. And they were, they were born and bred in the days here where they never went far at all, you know. This, this was their hub. Wombat, maybe went to Young Shopping. Yeah, tell us about your time running it, some of the, uh, some of the highlights. I don't want to get myself put in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, just a good fun time. Like, it's a job I had that I enjoyed because I'd probably always been a socialiser in pubs. Yep. And like most blokes, they sort of think, well, what better life than you can't have than running a pub, you know? Yeah. But it's a lot different to what they think. There's a lot of work in a pub as well. I was know? just about to ask. It's uh, tell yeah. us about the difficulties of running a pub. It's a, it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of hours, and even if you're quite during winter. You still got to be here that 15 hours a day sort of thing, you know. So if anyone thinks you just walk in and you employ people to pull beer and you sit on the outside of the bar and have a good time, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> no. Good to have someone keeping it going. Ian, as you can tell, he's doing a good job here. The pub looks very historic, like it should do, being a country pub, and I think he's doing fine myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope he does do fine because we don't want to lose little pubs in the bush. It's uh, it's yeah, it's it's disastrous. Well, I, I could name probably six around here that within 50 mile that have closed and they'll probably never open again either I don't think you know. How does it feel coming back to a pub that you've had such a connection to just uh, to have a beer and catch up with uh, with your mates? Oh it's good yeah I come out every now and then and what I do notice now there's a lot of new personnel and a lot of new people come to the area and I think that's just They've seen the light when they live in the cities and think, boy, I think I might just go out and try the country life for a while. And a lot of people, I think, they think, oh, well, we can always try it and go back. Yep. But a lot of them try it and they say, well, we're not going back, you know, because it's such a more relaxed lifestyle out here. Great place to be with. Logan owns a bit of a prick, but... <laughs> hey, get a hand. No, I didn't hear what he said. <laughs> Probably lucky I didn't. <laughs> I think he said something along the lines of that uh, you're a great bloke, great publican, something like that. Nah. No, he's lying there, probably. Nah, no, he's alright. He barred me once. Oh, oh, oh okay. Hey, yeah, so what happened? He spun his wheels here when there was a heap of people on the street. And I texted him and said, You're barred for two weeks. He goes, Make it four. I said, Okay, see you in four. Me, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what did you do for four weeks? Saved a bit of money. 
every time we drive by, so we just wave me. <laughs> <laughs> Every pub has a table of knowledge. Yes. Why are you here? <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't really want another one, but... Hell are lies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my daughter, she's... Yeah, she's all right. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so we're up at her place and had a can of Great Northern Deep. Got her own ink thing. She looked at the can done the cover up. Just looked at it and put it on there. And wrote chill out under it. So what do you drink, twoies? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's table of knowledge, mate. <laughs> <Today. Fuck off. laughs> Tell us about your involvement in the Wombat Hotel, how you came to being the publican here. Well, we had another little pub called Kulak. So it was a beehive hotel at Kulak. Mm -hmm. There were some misfortunes around this pub. Ended up doing a deal to take the lease on, and we uh, took the lease on, so we ran both. Right. And then, uh, then COVID hit, and we all closed. And we thought, wow, yeah. here we go. So that completely put us in the shit off. Yeah. yeah so. so one of them had to go? Kulak, yeah, in 2022. And... Uh, Cold afraid all on this now. Yep. And it's a good little pub. Yeah. Has its quiet time. Winter's dead. Winter is absolutely shit. Yep. But summertime you can't move. So you've been in pubs all your life. How does this one rate? It's a great bunch of people. And it's just the better. We can have a laugh in here every night. I've got old blokes come in there and that I just put shit on something bad and they just put it straight back. Yep. I know. I'll, I'll, we've got the old mayor of Harden here. Yep. I've, I've played jokes on him. I'll take a wheelchairs out to bring him in from the car. I'll take him, <laughs> take him walkers out. He drinks his beer that slow. I gave him a sippy cup. A great old, great guy. Yeah. Very knowledgeable. But when it comes down to the crunch of things and you're having hard times and things are on your mind, he's like one guy you can pull to the side and have a serious conversation with and he's there to help. It's good to hack and you need it. You've got to be able to talk about it. And that's why these pubs are so important because with places like this... Yeah. There's nowhere to go to talk. That's it. People come here to eat, drink, and just have a good time. And one thing I must say about this pub is the locals welcome anyone in. They want to have a talk to travellers. They want to have a talk to, to anyone that comes in. They're friendly as. Yeah. They have been in pubs that are. So after a couple of years of COVID and then winter, you're on your knees? We're, we're, we're slowly standing again. We're still beyond the, the eight ball. Yeah. But summer will see us catch up again. Yeah. And then we've got to prepare for winter again. And then summer comes around again. Cherry season's crazy. Any single guy out there, they come down here on a Sunday night in cherry season and you'll find a hundred French women backpackers drinking out in the front. No way. Oh, yeah. What are we, what are we doing here? What, 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 yeah, this is terrible yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sunday nights, we put on a free sausage sizzle for the backpackers and they just come out and look good work. How good. We have live music for them. They're drunk all night. They carry on. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Then we have a New Year's Eve uh, party. So we have a big BNS ball mm. in New Year's Eve. That's an another big event we have here. And that's just as bad. It's just crazy. Outstanding. Yeah. I'd love to know how many people are. Conceived. So conceived at a BNS ball. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're all good events. Yeah. You know, then we've got a little social group here that yep. have donated hundreds of thousands of dollars over the year. Amazing. How important are these in oh, events for well, the community? The community comes out and oh, they support it like yeah. you can believe. What's the and, community and in Wombat like? Tell us a bit about the, the great. Wombat community. Look, they're, they're, they're good. It's fun. Yeah. It's a fun community. They come down here and you have fun. They're, they're easy to talk to. Everyone banders and puts shit on each other. Footy season's the best down here. And I just I just rip it into everyone. All the Roosters supporters out there, and I'm a Sharky supporter, and mate, I'm ripping it into them. Nephew plays for the Sharks. Oh, mm. what's his name? Nico Hines. So. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. And, and he plays for the Sharks, yes. and if they lose tonight, I'm going to be in shit tomorrow. Oh, big time. But if I win, the banter continues. Granola versus the Rooters tonight. The bets are going down, but the best thing we can do is play a little song for them. The boys in the flag play the spoon. Up, up, down there, mate. Down there, up. Put the press on that. It's all about laughing. Shit. If you can't laugh, well, what's you? Now, we've got a nice story. 
Uh, the bar wouldn't be here if it wasn't for JT. JT. TP. TP. No, that's not right. No, good. <laughs> good. I'm glad. I'm glad I get my facts wrong. Trees here is is the uh, second. The sorry, the treasurer. treasurer of our social club. What do, you, what do you think of the Wombat Pub? We love it. It is a great little pub. Yeah, that's why we're down here all yep. the time. You should have been here about 10 minutes ago and we were talking crap. I'm all being mean crap. Hey, yeah, when you back stage today? I did. I, I knew I was going to be on TV. <laughs> so, so I thought, yeah, yeah. yeah and this is Aldo. Well, I'm grateful for info and, and I love coming over here. It is a good show. The only part about that is Mrs. doesn't know where he is. <laughs> Has <laughs> got no idea. The bar major, a hoot. Right? I was going to ask you oh, next about Ariel. Mate, Ariel. Ariel's a crack. Ariel started in the kitchen. My wife put her on in the kitchen as a as a kitchen hand. She was quiet. We said, "Why don't you get your RSA and we'll put you, give you some shifts in the bar." So we put her in the bar there, and she didn't like it. She hated it. Now, if I ask her to help in the kitchen, she won't go. I always smile. I just have a resting. Bitch taste. I just kind of pour beer and annoy the locals, really. If you want people to watch it and don't film you, I don't really like saying that, but it is true. I'll just do you one little thing about her. She swears a lot. I'm really good at that, actually. you got to say it at the right time, yeah. which is always. I'm just going to look really rude. Yeah. Like, not many people can tell their boss to get <laughs> <laughs> So tell us about the locals. What are they like? They like to give me shit, but I don't take them. Shut up. Mate, Ariel, if I ever got rid of Ariel, I wouldn't have any clients. She's learned how to swear like you wouldn't believe. She puts shit on every local that comes in, and they put shit on her. But we love her. She's family. We're, we've been down and hurt. She's helped. We just admire her so much. Thank you, darling. Okay, okay, okay. Who do you like putting shit on the most? Jack. <laughs> Jack. So Jack's a local mechanic here, works on everyone's cars. Only during the week, not on weekends. Not on weekends, that's drinking time. Jack basically pays for Ariel's wages each week. This, this guy here, he owns Wombat Seconds across the road. And what I would like to tell everyone out there is, if you go to Wombat Seconds, the more you spend, the more beer he drinks. I'm not going to incriminate myself, so I won't get another beer. Kath is one of many people who popped in for a coldie at the Wombat Hotel and fell in love with the place. She moved in and even worked behind the bar for a few years and now has literally set up shop across the road. So I came to Wombat to do a bit of a fruit picking, come back the next year and just never left. Got offered a, can you help out one weekend at the pub? That weekend turned into eight years. Then it was time to give up the pub. This building here had been sitting here empty for five and it took me like four of those five years to get the courage to go, I'll open a cafe and here I am. Amazing, yeah. what was it about this place? It's just such a beautiful, friendly town. The locals are amazing, the travellers that you meet that come in. And once I started working in the pub, like I met so many amazing people, both in picking season and off season. And it's just like one great big happy family in Wombat. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and most of them have a connection to the pub. That's where you meet people. Yeah. For my first eight years, I think that I lived in the area. If you hadn't been to the Wombat Pub, I didn't know you. I didn't know a life outside <laughs> yeah. of this area. Tell us a little bit about the pub, what makes the pub so special. There's a lot of history at the pub, as yeah. I'm sure you've already discussed with people today. And the locals and their welcomingness to everybody. Any stranger that walks in that door is just welcome with open arms and we find out their life story. They find out all about the pub and not, I'm not the only one that's never left. There's quite a few others that sort of come for a visit and come back and stay. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. What does it mean? What does this pub mean to this community? Oh, look, it means everything to this community. It's like the centre of everything. Like most of your local meetings are held here. There's wakes. Yeah, it's just great the way it is. Nice and small. It gets crazy, as I'm sure you've heard, particularly picking season. I mean, there's been picking seasons where we've had people all the way across the road, people doing fire twirling in the middle of the street, out the front. Tr trucks come up the road, they just step aside, get yeah. back in the middle of the road. How yeah. good. How would you sum up the community if you, if you could? I would just say it's just a very welcoming, beautiful, close-knit community. I say it's just like one great big family. How good does this look? It was only a quick trip to Wombat, but it's so clear why this pub is so special. The banter, the history, and the stories of people who found a home here more than bricks and mortar. It's the thread that binds this little community. 
So I raise a glass to this much loved Aussie pub that defines the spirit of its locals. Cheers.